This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. One, two, three, four. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is that jazz craze. It was written by Chris Spivey, and it can be found in Harlem Unbound. Keith Craig is our keeper of arcane lore, and this is episode two. Our recap will be given by Steve Anderson as his character, Phil Hensley. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Steve Okay, guys. So, like, let's let's just recap where we are because lots of crazy stuff has happened, right? So, we're trying to get a recording contract, but nobody will give it to us. But somehow, Wendell Wendell Young, a savant, as we all know, piano players, he's gotten some money to do it. And when we were talking to people about it, somebody said maybe he got it from the Baron in Blue, but then. Uh, then we found out it was actually from Casper Holstein, uh, the guy who runs numbers here. So I went over to, to buy my numbers. And when I was doing that, I talked to George. And he told me that that uh, Casper was looking for somebody to, to find Wendell because nobody had seen Wendell for a couple of days. And we noticed that the night before at our gig, Wendell wasn't there, which was surprising. So, um, so I told him, hey. Let, him, let Casper know. We'll look him up. So we went over, met with Casper, and he offered us $200 to find Wendell and or the master. And we jumped at that. So Casper said that the recording was set up at uh, Blue Moon. So we headed over there into the Bronx and talked with a man there named Cliff Perkins. And he said he didn't do the recordings himself. His engineer, George Fiorino, makes a record. But he's pretty mad at George because George had been missing work for a couple of days. Well, we figured George is the next step. So we called George's place up and talked to somebody there. And they say he's not answering his phone or uh, he's not answering his door. But he's there because they can hear music playing. So we head over to George's place and a couple of, couple of us went up and uh, found our way in and uh, only to find George there hanging from a rope dead as could be. We didn't want to hang, we didn't want to stick around there long after that. So we took off, went over to the fabrication shop and man, that was a crazy scene. Guys fighting, another guy with his eyes gouged out. But the craziest one was this one guy who kept sticking a pencil in his ear. And eventually he uh, he just banged his head down on that pencil with it going right up in his brain. And that was too much. I took a little walk. Um, and when I stepped outside, I saw some guy all dressed in blue just kind of slip around the corner. So I went over there to talk to him and... <laughs> Of all things, this this guy, he said his name was the Baron. So, you know, maybe that's where people got confused about Wendell getting his money. But and he said he talked to Wendell a little while before, had a competition with him, and and he wanted to have a competition with me. So he and I, we played our horns, and of course I won. Um, and so he gave me uh this this crazy horn man with six valves. And a promise that I could play it and play better. Um, while I was out talking to this this fella, the rest of the band searched through the fabrication shop and they found a master and a box of records. And then uh, we got out of there as quick as we could. So from there, we headed off to Wendell's place. And that's where we are now, waiting for those guys to come down and tell us what's happening up there. Did, did I miss anything, guys, fellas? 
I think that's about I think, right. Yeah, kind of a crazy scene for us. All right. All right. So uh, as uh, Phil, Phil implied, a couple of you guys went up to uh, Wendell's apartment. Uh, he wasn't really very responsive to you. And then he uh, went back over uh, by his piano and was uh, writing some more notes in his uh, in his King James version of the Bible. Um, then yeah, he kind of hits a note, and gets out a pencil, and writes writes in a, another spot there. But he doesn't have any of the lines, you know, like on the the clef that you would have. I see. Yeah. Can, can I see where in the book he's writing, like which passage it is? Uh, it's in Psalms because, you know, when you kind of open up the Bible, right? And uh, it's kind of right in the middle. You do notice, though, when you kind of look there, he does have looks like a uh, <clears throat> like uh, a, a further to the back of the Bible. It's marked and it looks like he cut out an article in a newspaper to as a, to use as his bookmark. I'm going to I'm going to try to take that out. Uh, when you reach for it, he kind of uh, looks up at you and uh, then he goes back to what he's doing. Missing Harlem resident found in East River. The body of Anthony Jackson, age 21, was recovered from the East River near Brooklyn late last night. Jackson, a professional cornet player and trumpeter from Harlem, have been missing for several days. New York police have now ruled out foul play, but are assuming suicide or death by a misadventure for the young. Edward. Um, do I know Anthony Jackson? Yeah, you, he was, uh, you guys, he was one of the Windows band members. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, is there a date on this? Or anywhere? That uh, I can see? It was this morning. It was this morning. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like he was with it enough to cut out this very specific uh, newspaper clipping. So, so something must have happened in between then. Yeah. Uh, is it? Is it just me or uh, is everybody connected to this uh, Wendell and this recording session going a little cuckoo or at least weird things occurring yeah there's a lot of weird shit going on around and, here but and and, and now that now the trumpeter's dead uh -huh. this is not good you know i don't know about you but you know this isn't looking good mm -hmm. no man we you know we got the mob we're involved with the mob here they do some crazy shit yeah, I'm wondering that too. Do you think he's been, you know, slowly taking him out? That way he gets the recording all to himself. Mm. I mean, I've heard some strange stuff. I mean, especially for street cred, but I don't know. And yeah, we're dealing with these gangsters. You know, they operate. You know, they don't. Have, they don't have morals. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to keep on searching the place, see if there's anything else. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, as you look around, you do see uh, a picture uh, on, on like a, a table there. You recognize uh, the picture. It was from uh, when you guys were coming home from, from the war. It's the uh, Hellfighters Band on the the ship coming home he remember the fond memories of uh of that event that you had you had survived the hell of the trenches and it was uh yeah, quite was a quite the joyous day. joyous trip home but besides that i mean you know he was a, a struggling musician he didn't have have a a lot and here he has a his a mattress that he slept on he's got his piano which is probably where he spent most of his money on and he uh has a re record player well we got wendell we have the master we got what we need but do you think he'll want him if he's in this condition 
I don't think he's going anywhere. I think that neighbor's dog. All right. Boy, it's... Do we keep him here or do we take him with us? I might be safer to keep him here. He seems to be entertaining himself or at least trying to write music. So I say we just take the picture, take that article. I don't. I didn't see anything else. Did you? Uh, I mean, I guess I don't know. I mean, with the murder, now I'm a little bit worried for his safety, and you know, like, but I'm also worried about giving him over to this crime lord. You know, what's he gonna do with him? And. Just taking a look at him, the way he's talking, if we try to pull him away from this piano, you know, when he's trying to do something, you know how it happened at that recording studio. What if he decides to not want to leave? Well, let's, I mean, let's, let's try. Let's see, let's see what, uh, right. what he does if we try to take him out of here. Yeah. So I'm going to try to kind of lead him up, um, and like lead him to the door. Okay. Uh, when you do that, he uh, at first he's a little resistant. He plays like one more note. He uh, writes it down, and then he folds. He closes the Bible, and then he starts walking with you. Okay, okay. Well, it looks like he'll come with us. Um, I don't know. Do you think we should ask the other guys what we should do? Oh, let's take him with us. We can always bring yeah. him back up. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna kinda kinda lead him out. Not like I'm like holding his hand, but I'm kinda like behind him, kinda like push nudging him forward, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. He uh he goes with you, uh, and still the only sounds he making makes are, you know, nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all right, buddy. It's okay. Yeah, come on. God, I wonder if he has any family here in town. Uh, he's yeah, he's from Texas, right? Yep. Yeah, I think so. I I don't think any of his family is here. Mm -hmm. uh, that that must be a blessing, though. You know that way. You know, I'm quite right. sure his family would be heartbroken if they were in town. Keep going back. He said he wanted either the recording or Wendell. I'm wondering if maybe maybe we just give him the recording and say we couldn't yeah. find Wendell. I feel bad, like handing him over to this this guy. He he, he ain't gonna be making any more music the way the pace he's going. Yeah, that's why I was thinking. Yeah, but we can take him with us. Let the rest of the guys decide what we're gonna do. All right, all right. Uh, so uh, you lead them down the you lead Wendell down the steps, and you come out, and uh, when he steps outside, he kind of looks around and. Uh, it's like he's never seen the outside before. Just completely fascinated. And he's, he's gone soft in the brain. Considering everything we've seen so far, I mean, yeah, I'm starting to feel a little soft in the brain. I hate to admit it. Mm. <laughs> you bring okay. him over to where we are? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's up with Wendell? Is he on drugs? Guys, I, I don't know. He's he ain't acting right. And uh I I'm I'm worried, you know. We I mean, we hand him over to this, you know, hand him over to this crime lord. I mean, this guy can't defend himself or anything and he clearly can't talk. Yeah, it's almost a milder version of what we saw at the recording studio, wouldn't you think, Anton? Oh, man. Don't let him get near any pencils. Huh. Now, he's already been near a pencil. He was writing yeah. music. Well, he was writing notes on a in this in this Bible he's carrying, but um you know, it, you know, it didn't have any lines or anything, so only he could figure it out. Well, maybe you can figure out the intervals. Uh yeah. What was what was that record deal? He got his money up front. Is he getting a second payment? Because like as long as we show he got results, I think he already got paid, didn't he? Uh, so the record deal was they 
he paid the studio to do the uh do the rec- do the recording and to produce the records but uh he'd only get paid by sell by sell on the, the actual records so so he okay so he got this deal he got the money from casper to get the record done Mm-hmm. So he and the boys, he and his boys must have gone in and performed the music. And then they put it on the record. But since then, it seems like the people involved in the record itself all went nuts. Mm-hmm. Or were murdered. Well, and I mean, those three guys at the at the shop didn't get murdered. They, they well, look at this nuts. article. I'll, I'll show them the article. You know, it's I don't know. Band, one of the band members. Yeah. They Could played be. the music. Yeah. And, and, uh, Cliff would have listened to the music and the guys in the shop pressing it probably had to check the quality, and they listened to the music. This is starting to feel like some sort of weird curse on the music. What do you mean, music curse? Well, you know, voodoo, witchcraft, black magic. Nah. Nah, man, none of that's real. We, what, you, you think so? we pop that in and listen to it, it'll do something to us? I have no idea, but I... I'm kind of freaked out by it. I must admit, I you know, I am kind of freaked out about everything we've seen. I, I, to be honest, I'd like to get a little distance from all this by my druthers, but uh, I do I want to make sure Wendell here is taken care of because he is in no shape. And Wendell performed it, so... I'm almost t- tempted to say we drop Wendell off someplace where maybe he can get some help. Mm-hmm. I don't think the crime boss is going to care as long as he gets the masters and the records. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I thought. Yeah, I think I, I think I agree with you, Malachi. I think uh, I think maybe we drop him off at Lincoln General and, you know hand over the 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 master call it a day i i don't know man they they're not going to treat him right they'll just chuck him in the loony bin and forget about him it's, if we could track down some family his family's all the way in texas what what about his bandmates the they're tight we could try to look them up but yeah i have a weird feeling now we're going to find them all sticking pencils in their ears or, or you know, ground in the together. Hudson. Yeah, maybe maybe they'll know something. Maybe they'll help. Well, maybe. what do you want to do with Wendell at this time? I mean, they... let's bring him along. We, yeah. we yeah, can score cool. him in my place. We can stash him in my place for a while. Well, we, you know, we should leave him alone. I think we got to keep an eye on him. He, he doesn't look right. Well, we can't leave him alone and keep an eye on him at the same time. Just bring him yeah. along. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Y'all, y'all are dragging him around, though. I'm not, I'm not going to babysit him. Yeah, sure, sure. I got Wendell. You guys do know his bandmates' names, uh, besides Anthony Jackson, who you uh, know about his sad fate. There was uh, Buddy Moreno, and also Fred Kearns. Buddy and Fred. Mm-hmm. Now, if 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 something's happened to the two of them. There's something wrong with this recording. And I don't know if it's a curse or if it's science or if it's something that it did to their brains. But I don't know. Should we give it to uh, Casper and just warn him? Hell yes, we should. We need to get that mind. Chances like this don't come around. Well, what if he it puts here. it on the radio? Our heck just plays it out a uh, large out his window. I mean, radio is the worst part, but well, if he just decides to play on the uh, uh on a, a 
phonograph of big speaker and his windows open. Who else might affect? Or at the club. Oh, I, God. I think you guys are jumping to some crazy conclusions. I tried to hit the mute button, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, let's see if we can find his other bandmates. Maybe they can, if if they're sane, you know, maybe they can tell us what happened. Um, and then if we can't find him, I don't know. Maybe just like, we we show him to uh, to Casper. Yeah. 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 And Steve, it's what's like, with that weird horn guys. that you got? Where did you get that? I got that from the Baron in Blue. What the hell are you talking about, man? This Baron in Blue shit. Like, look, I uh, I had a contest with him, and uh, uh, I won, so he gave it to me. He was at the he was at the Fab Shop. Yeah, we would have heard you playing. We didn't hear shit. Like, what? That was that was kind of loud in there. Maybe, but yeah, that was pretty messed up. What I was outside with him, you know, you uh, guys were in dealing with the crazies, and yeah. me, I, I look at this baby. I mean, but geez, it's cold. Yeah. Well, I mean, what are you, yeah. what are you gonna do with that? You're gonna sell it? You only got four fingers. No, no man, I'm gonna make my career with this thing. <laughs> Ain't nobody else got a, a horn like oh, this. Yeah. I I suspected it, but man, you got to get off that horse again, man. I thought you were off that shit. I... No, 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 no. Maybe that's what's wrong with Wendell, but that ain't what's wrong with me. I'm good. Look at I have this horn. Do you see this horn? Yeah, I see yeah, it. I see it. But did you steal from some freaking bum on the street? Like, yeah, I don't know how you bum's got a it. horn like this. It's a toy. You've only got you've only got four fingers. How are you going to play so a I'm five saying. foul, six foul? You know, you got a two hand this trumpet. I got. I'll practice. I'll figure it out. They couldn't shut. You know, those woodwind boys, they, they use lots of fingers. <laughs> Your lips aren't going to be able to keep up. Don't you I tell me keep, that, man. Keep hitting the horse, man. You like, you know I'm the best, best there is on my horn. That's why I won this thing. But yeah, it was, it was, the guy called himself Baron, I think, or maybe, I mean, it's crazy, but he said the Baron, but I'm sure it was just Baron, you know. Well, let's let's. Uh, so, what are we gonna do? We're gonna look for bandmates. Wait, he band was all dressed in blue. So, <sighs> yeah, whatever, uh, man. Some <laughs> pimp comes up to you and hands you a trumpet and probably a little sniffer of something, and man, like, whatever, man. You're gonna wait, hear wait. me. You you are fellow dap now, but wait till I figure this thing out, and you guys ride my coattails. Right up there with King Oliver. We're going to be rich. Sure. Hey, Phil, I would love to ride your coattails. If, if you can All make right. this thing work, hell yeah. Well, with Sam's new song. Yeah. That's, I, I, you know, I actually uh, took the melody for that and played that as my lick to this uh, Baron guy. And uh, that's how I won. He, he couldn't play at all, man. He played some kind of crazy... I don't know. The the tune was all over the place and it just it was it almost hurt. It was so bad. Well, yeah, because so he was some cracked out, cracked out yeah. imp you stole a trombone from like <laughs> trump, or, trumpet from. Like Or he man. lost on purpose. Yeah, I got rid of a cursed trumpet that no one else can really play. Let's I can play on Buddy and Fred. I ran. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's go try to find these find these fools and let's clean up. What's I say we just go to Casper and get our money. We done what he asked. I don't know. Should we take it to a vote? Sure. It's America, right? Uh, I say we find the other <laughs> band members so that Wendell can be taken. We can figure out how to take care of Wendell. Either if any of them are left, they can help us out. Or worse yeah. comes to worse, we may have to drop them off at a sanitarium or hospital. Man, yeah. Well, let's yeah let's let's vote. Let's vote for the first time in our lives, huh, boys? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not so... like any white man would count it anyway. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay. So who's for, who's for finding the bandmates? No, well, that already outnumbers us. All right. Well, all right. So we go find the plant. We go find the I'm, I'm also fine taking the record. I don't, you know, whatever. Well, we could do both. We could do both. Let's just find the bandmates first. Let's see if we can get some more info on this, on this, and then we'll we'll pass it off. We already got what we came here for. So yeah. yeah. Let's just get our, our money. Let's let oh never mind. We already voted. I lost. If the if Let's the other bandmates though were in the same condition as Wendell, we're gonna have to stuff all three of them in the car. Oh, well, you know, like like Anton said, they were probably just at the gig recording and they got into some uh, some stuff that was a little too hot for them. And, you know, Wendell's just going to sleep it off. He'll be fine. Yeah, that's true. It might just be drugs. Yeah. yeah. Probably drugs. Wouldn't doubt it. Okay, so we probably don't know where they live, so I'm going to try to look up the phone book and see if okay. I can look it. All right. Uh, give me a luck roll. Okay. Um, ooh, uh, I was. Oh, I can't spend one point. Uh, I got a fifty-six <laughs> out of fifty-five. Does ah, uh, yeah, yeah. They're probably uh, staying in like a community, uh, you know, place. So they didn't have their names listed. We'll yeah, just no ask luck. around. We know All where right. they hung out. So okay. let's hit some of the clubs they have played. They would can't, might know. Sure. All right. Uh, you know that they played at the Hep Cat. All right, let's head down to the Hep Cat, see if, see if we can figure out where these guys are at. Maybe someone's seen them. Oh, hey, let's make sure we park a bit of ways from it. Some of the people at the Hep Cat will know Wendell, and, and they might know someone's looking for him. We don't want... Um, you know, Wendell's our like, bounty. Yeah, so... Yeah, let's you know, park a bit of ways. One of us, uh, you know, one or two of us will need to stay with Wendell. Yeah. All right. How about Bill sticks back with Wendell and I? He toots that horn a little bit while you guys go to see if you can sleuth something out. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Right. All right. So who's going to the speakeasy then? Uh, Anton. I guess um, I'm going. Man, Malik, and, and I am. All right, so the three of you, and then uh, Jerry and Phil are going to hang out with Wendell out, out in the car. All right. Okay. I'm going to see if I can warm that horn up. All right, yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah. going to play it. I'm just trying to, to get it warm. Yep, gotcha. Uh, okay. All right, so uh, the three of you make, make it to uh, the um, – it's a uh, medical supply is the storefront, but you all know that uh, how to get get into this the speakeasy. When you uh, come in, you see uh, the doorman uh, Uriah Metheny. He kind of uh, looks up and he's like, "Oh no!" He's like, uh, "Here a little early, aren't we?" Yeah, man. We're... Go ahead, Sam. We're we're looking for Wendell's uh, uh, bandmates. Oh, well, I haven't seen him since uh, a couple nights ago. Yeah, Wendell came in here, like, quoting the Bible to me, and uh, I told him that, you know, he was killing the vibe, and uh, his bandmates uh, took took him out here and told him that, hey, they need to re get the recordings done t the next day. Do you have any idea where Buddy or Fred live? Oh. He's like, oh, uh Fred, he lives over on the on the south side, and uh, Buddy, he's over in the little little flop house there on uh, on Sixth Street. Oh yeah. Okay. You said he yeah, was acting just... funny. One hundred and twenty sixth Street. Sorry, one hundred and twenty sixth Street. <laughs> uh, you said he, he was acting funny. Oh yeah, yeah. He was like. Uh, you know, he's kind of, uh, he's, he's drinking the hard stuff. You know, Wendell, you know, he usually likes uh, just his beers and all, but uh, told him that we were running a little low, and he said, that's okay, just give him give him some gin. And then he started talking about uh, oh, Revelations. You know, he's uh, he kept opening up the Bible, quoting Revelations 8. 
And I was like, you know, I was like, we, we don't need to hear about that. We, uh, we think he and his bandmates might have gotten into some, some bad gin. Oh, it wasn't from here. Well, no, I don't think so. We just need to find him. They're, well, we, Wendell's acting really weird and, uh, you may have saw it in the news earlier. Did you hear what happened to, uh, Jackson? Uh, no, I didn't. What? Yeah, they found him in the river. Oh, man. But he, uh, some cop, cop grab him and throw him in there? I don't know. I think he might have just fallen in. Hmm. Yeah. Well, if he got in that bad gin you're talking about, I, I could see that. Um, anyway, thanks a lot. We're going to go check right. and see if we can find them. Yeah, we'll all see right, you later well, on tonight. All right. Yeah, yeah. If they don't show up, we, we got an open stage. All right, cool. cool. All right. So South Side's a little bit hard to find him, but we have the fob house over on 126. We can we know where that is. Yeah, I know which one he's talking about. Yeah. So All we'll right. get Phil and Jerry. All right. Yeah. So uh Phil and Jerry are sitting there. Wendell just keeps uh you know he starts humming to himself. And uh, both of you can give me a uh, an arch craft, uh, you know, in your your musical uh, instrument. The two that are in the car with him. Yep. I got a regular pass. Okay. Um, so, oh, how'd you do there, uh, Phil? I got a extreme success. Oh wow! Okay. All right. So. Uh, the time signature he's using it seems to keep changing you know it's uh changing from like uh is definitely not any four four or two four it's all the weird time uh jazz syncopation like what five nights night this all the those weird uh beats but what's even stranger is that like it seems like his uh notes now he's got a He's hitting the notes when he's humming, but like it's not following any chord or structure that that you recognize. It's almost, you know, annoying to the ear. You know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, you're like okay, because you're like, okay, yeah, uh, after this should be an A flat, and then he hits like an E sharp, and you're like, whoa. Does yeah. this remind me of a certain horn playing I heard in an alley? Uh, it's uh, very eclectic like that, but not yeah. the definitely not the same tune. Okay. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Wendell's a better I, player than this. Yeah, it's, it's like he's choking. He lost his talent. I mean, he lost his whole damn brain, huh? Seems that way. Wendell, come on, man. Break out of it. And I, I try to hum uh, some standard... Something okay. that I know he knows to see if he'll he'll go along. Okay. Um, when you uh, start doing that, he kind of uh, is imitating you, but he's always like you know half half step behind. He might still be in there, Jerry. Yeah, it's kind of sad there. I, I want to. I want to see you try to play that horn. Do something simple. Try like, uh, you know, marry out a little lamb. Just go slow. Figure out oh, what those how levers cold do. Is the mouthpiece. All right. Uh, the mouthpiece, it, it's it's warm. It's getting back up okay. to uh, like atmospheric temperature. Yeah. Let let me uh, let me do something with it then. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, trumpet roll. Sorry. Don't roll, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a 31. So okay. um, that's a hard success. All right, both of you give me a power roll. Uh-oh. Uh, I got a hard. Okay. I failed. Uh, how much luck do I have left? I have 24 luck. I rolled. Boy, I can just. I'll have two luck points left, but I think you, I want to do that. You need a heart. Oh, well, I can't get a heart. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, 
Jerry, you know, you're like, yeah, he's he is good at, good on on that trumpet. Phil, uh, you like for a moment your your mind kind of opens up and you just see uh, blackness out there and you just uh, almost feel the need to start playing as loud as possible. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah. you know, but but. Before you can start blowing, and uh, Wendell reaches up and he kind of knocks the uh, horn. Oh, you know, not uh, you probably got a decent grip, but he definitely knocks it away from your face. Wendell, man, what are you doing? Oh, I was just starting to get the groove. Yeah. What? Or was what? I getting scared? Wendell doesn't like it. It's... No, not nah, man. You were doing great. That's I'm impressed. I think it'll take me a little while, but I don't. I don't want. Window must yeah, not like it. So, as maybe maybe he just doesn't like loud noises. I mean, you know, I'm oh, used yeah. to it. He should be too. But yeah, well, we'll try it again later when he's not around. All right, and the other three they, make it. The, make the it tone break. was okay though, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah All you're right, killing it. I mean, All it's right. funky. It's it's something weird. I let Ooh. it let us in. Run. Um, so, I guess Wendell was here the other day, just before the their recording with the guys. Uh, we know where uh, Fred and uh, well, Fred's gonna be harder to find. He's on the south side, but Buddy's at the Flop House on One Twenty Six Street. You know the place. Um, bartender said that. Uh, Wendell was in here quoting from the Bible, uh, Revelations 8. And as I recall from my mother, that's the part where there was silence in heaven for half an hour. And then they give, they open up the seventh seal and the angels blow the trumpets and the end of the world happens. Sounded good till that last part, Sam. So doesn't sound like he was in a good place. No. And then well, Phil has a six valve trumpet. <laughs> now let me get the car started and uh, we'll head over to that area. Phil, hey, you hey. promise not to start the apocalypse? <laughs> For one thing, we know you ain't no angel. Well, that that's true, man. But don't worry. I mean, it's just a horn. All right. All right. So Malachi, you, you get the car started and yeah. get uh rolling up rolling on out of there. Yeah. Head okay. to the head to the flop house. All right. Um all of you give me a, a spot hit in. Double O six. Nice. nice. What is my spot hidden? I failed. Oh, that's not even an extreme, damn it. <laughs> oh, you would have I'll spend one, one point to make it an extreme. <laughs> yeah. need it. How about you, Malachi? Uh, I'm too busy driving. Okay, well, that's probably a wise choice. Okay, <laughs> so so Anton and uh, uh, Sam, you guys, uh, when you kind of turn on the street, you, uh, you see uh, Buddy. He's uh, walking. Oh, He's a uh, Walking back and forth, but uh, you know, he's kind of just staring down. And it looks like you know, he's wearing like his night clothes. Oh, shit. hey, pull over, Malachi. I All see right. you. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out. Hey, man, hey, I'm gonna kind of wave, try to get his attention. Okay, Daddy. kind of stares at you. And you notice that uh, behind him, there's bloody footprints, like uh, where he's been stepping. Oh shit! Um, shit! Fuck! Get him! Get him in the car! Um, shit! Yeah, let's get him in the car. Let's let's follow his follow his uh, follow his footsteps. When you get, when you start guiding him there, it's his feet that are bleeding. 
Right. He's bare. He's barefoot. Oh, um, glass maybe. Yeah, probably stepped on something. You know, walking around the city without any sh- any foot protection. He's nuts. He's lost his mind, just like Wendell. Oh shit! Do uh, hey Malachi, do you got any like rags or anything in the in your car, or, like extra socks or an extra pair of shoes? Yeah, I got some. Tr- this is gonna get in a trunk. Yeah, I got some. Uh, not I don't have some spare socks and shoes, but I got some rags. All right. They're a little just oily, like but his feet. yeah, I don't know. Just like wrap his feet or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and investigate where he was coming from, kind of like following his his footsteps. Okay. Yeah, you don't even need to roll for that. Okay. Yeah, uh, you uh, kind of fall fall there, and uh, around right around the block, you see uh, this broken bottle. And it's obvious that he had stepped on that. But you notice his stride didn't, you know, his, he had a normal stride still when he's walking. So it wasn't like he was limping. Yeah, like not aware of the pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, how far are we from the flop house? Uh, you're probably uh, a couple miles. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to attempt to do a first aid while I'm wrapping up his feet. Okay, yeah. Uh, since they're oily rags, you'll have a penalty die. All right. Um, let's see here. I'll take a look at the list. Um, no, just well, I'll spend three points of luck. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. You getting tied on there, and you, uh, you know, you find the least. Dirty, oily rag to put on his wounded foot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, as you kind of tie that on there, you know, for a moment, you know, it kind of seems like the uh, the rag pulls away from the the foot, and then you, when you kind of close your eyes, it's back to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just go shake my head a bit and all right, hold myself together. Hold myself together. <laughs> um, all right, I get back in the driver's seat. Wait till Anton gets back. Okay. All right, Anton. I assume you. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, I'll just come back if I don't see anything else. All right, uh, this car is probably uh, quite crowded now. Seven, seven, right. seven men. All right, folks. I don't know about you, but how many of us believe all the rest, well, whoever's left the band members are pretty much in the same shape as Wendell and Buddy here? Probably incredibly the harder one to find. So yeah. I say we go straight to Holstein. Yeah, okay. let's get our money, man. All yeah, right. We, but we got to want- just. Do- Put these guys really somewhere. Want, yeah, we we need to take these guys someplace where they're going to be taken care of. I I don't wouldn't feel right about handing either one of these two to what to um, Holstein. I mean, well, I've who's going to take care of them? Well, if, even if we take them to a, the hospital, though, you know, it might not be the best care, but it's sure better than getting a you know whatever Holstein might do to them. What yeah, were hospitals going to take them? They don't got no money. Well, there's charities and stuff like that. I just hate to, you know. Yeah, I I hate it too. But we get them to a hospital. I mean, they're I, gonna I, say that they're dumb and put them down. Don't don't any of you guys have a have some lady friend that can take care of these guys? I mean, I'm between women right now, but I'm sorry here. That you know, this is one of our own. Yeah, put, remember that you know, these somebody's guys. Got a these good... guys these guys yeah. were in the trenches with us. You know, I, I yeah. can't believe you guys are being so let's, uh, cavalier about this. Let's we're not take we're just realistic to the speakeasy. Let's ask the bartender to take care of them. We can take them. We could take them to the, um, you know, the mission over there on the, the homeless mission. 
Yeah, I guess we could do that. They're used to people who are a little off. Yeah. Yeah. So, little little bad bad gin or or coming down off a bad high. Yeah. Yeah. So I start driving towards the mission. Okay. Yep. You can get there without any issue. Uh, about this whole thing is is crazy. All right, so uh, when you get to the mission, uh, kind of, I uh, assume you uh, go in and talk to the staff. What do you tell them? Uh, we th- uh, I, I take a look at Anton. I think the bad chin story might could be good. Yeah. Not sure we should go in and tell them anything. Just drop the guys off. and well, We got to make sure they go in. You know, they're going to ask us yeah. whether we take them home ourselves. They don't want to, if he's got some place to go. Well, they need some type of medical care, though. I know. They just got to sleep it off, Anton. Like, all well, of this makes perfect sense needs with some so bad together. drugs, right? They go there, it's they charity. record. I'm sure they'll take care of them. The Sisters of Mercy or whatever. And just going to make sure they go inside and then we're taking off then. All right. Yeah, I'll help you. I'll help you bring them in. Okay. All right. Uh, so if I understood right, you're going to kind of just drop it off and try and guide them in there. Yeah. But yeah. Try and avoid the staff so you don't yeah. get caught until 20 questions. Right. right. Yeah. And if they ask, we found them on the street, and they they seem to be confused. Okay. All right. Um, whoever is trying to get in there, just give me a stealth roll to just kind of avoid being seen. All right. right I got a success. 10 out of 40. Yeah. Nice. All right. Yep. Kind okay. of, all right. Got I, need a, I need to spend like three points a lot, but yeah, I can, okay. I can do that. No problem. Yeah, uh, inside it's quite, you know, noisy. There's a lot of people there, and but they do have cots set out, and you do see like some uh, nuns that are uh, helping out. Yeah. All right. All right. Now it's going to be hosting. All right. All right. So uh, when you go back up to where Holstein's office was, uh, that one one kid's still still outside. Yeah, he, uh, he's like, "Hey, uh, Phil, Phil, your numbers come up. Did you check yet?" No, I didn't check my number. Did oh. it come up? I don't know. Give me a luck roll. <laughs> I have twenty four luck. I rolled a nineteen. Oh, yeah. hey, look at that. Oh, lucky day, lucky day. He's like going to, you know, uh, you know, you know what uh, a gam- uh, a winner does. He rolls that into the tomorrow's bet. Uh, yeah, maybe. The, right. let, I'll, I'll send it back to you tomorrow, but uh, let's uh, let's get what I got now. Okay, yeah. I, I yeah. gave you a quarter. It pays, what, uh, mm. four, 40 to one? Uh, hey, not not quite that, not quite that. He he gets out three dollars and, and all right, uh, thirty to one. Like, yeah. Lucky man, all lucky right. man. Right. Okay, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. The real real money's upstairs. We're going up to see Casper. All right, thanks, George. No I'm, <laughs> I'm probably carrying the um, records, mm-hmm. and one of you is probably carrying the master. Okay. Well, I uh, get up there and uh, you see Casper. He, he looks up and he's like, "Going, hmm, you guys work fast." Yeah, but like, we got quite a story for you. We get a bonus for doing it so quick, Mister uh, uh, Casper. Oh well, you know, uh, you'll be the first one I turn to when I got another job because mm-hmm. you know, hey. Yeah, it's How about take, a job recording? <laughs> well, let's see see if this uh this investment pays off. 
Okay. Like, let's see here. I five hundred to rent the studio. I'll get you two hundred there. I need to sell each album, each record for a dollar. A thousand records, eh, three hundred dollar profit. You know, that's not bad. We'll definitely sell a thousand records if you record us. I got this new horn, man. I got a sound nobody's going to be able to touch. Oh, um, that's fascinating, Phil. Uh, I'm not really a, a music guy. I'm more of a, you know, I like the sound of cash registers, but, hmm. but, yeah. but it's, well, that's how you feel. Here's this record. All right. And well, we had know. a deal, right? Yeah. He opens it up. He's like going... There's not a thousand records here. That's that's Sam. Why don't you tell him the story? So these records now are extremely rare. We got to uh, the fabrication place, and okay, start. Sorry, I'm going to start earlier. I think that there's something cursed about whatever this piece of music is because so far everybody that's listened to it has gone stark raving mad. Everyone at the fabrication place is dead. They all committed suicide. I guess that's why they didn't print off the rest of my copies. Yeah. And then uh, uh, was it Cliff Perkins? Is that him? Cliff yeah. Perkins is dead. He's hanging that's, from the rafters. Oh, no, that's that's George Fiorini. George, that's Fiorini, George, yeah. George Fiorini is uh, dead. He's committed yeah, suicide. I don't know who that is, but he's, he's sounds the guy tragic. That he's the one that recorded the song. You know, yeah. Made the, oh. made the yeah. master. Oh. Uh, Wendell and Buddy and Fred are out of their fucking minds. Jackson's at the bottom of the river. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you got there is, we don't know what. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see him uh, thinking, and he's like, uh, counts, he's like going, hmm, I have to try these out. It's going to be a good way to uh, solve some problems with people. Well, if, it's if you're going to try him out, you got to try him out on some unsuspecting fool. I maybe would, maybe I would someone I don't like. All I say is don't be in earshot. Hmm. Yeah. Now, you got the master? We do. You have the master now. Ah, oh, thank you. He gets a... Uh, Gets out some keys and uh, opens up a drawer. Gets out an envelope and he starts counting out uh, twenty ten dollar bills. He's like going. He's like as as promised. Uh, you guys, you guys delivered. I did just say I wanted the master, I, but uh, hmm. So Thank curious, you. curious story. Very curious. I think they just all got into some bad dope, you know, and uh, and that just. But well, that's not let's you not, ride the wave, right? It's going to be in the paper. You yeah. start selling your your records with that name. Hey, you're going to make some money. And you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. People people are always fascinated by stuff that they're not supposed to have. Yeah, I I could charge more. I could I could I could make it up. You guys did good. You guys did good work. Real good work. Well, use caution, you know. I will. But uh, thank you very much for all of your uh, your generosity. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, like hey, uh, if you you ever need need a little assistance, uh, come come on by. You guys, uh, I help you out. I'll ha I'll have jobs jobs for you. Yes, sir. Please, sir. All right. Huh. You call All me, right, Casper. Well, 
Casper, we, we got a gig we got to get to. So thank you, sir. You're a man All of right. your word. All right. And uh, like I said, if you uh, if you're open to financing somebody else, we're your band. All right. Promise yeah. we'll sell you a thousand records. Well, we'll see how this one how this one goes. I, I appreciate that. Hmm. All right. Take care. You see him, he's kind of uh, flipping through it. He gets a look on his face like he's thinking of how to maximize his uh, profits. Give me my 40 bucks. Yeah, yeah. You bet. Here you go. <laughs> Share the wealth. Let's get the hell out of town. <laughs> let's let's get to our show, man. Yeah. I can't wait to put this baby through its Yeah, pieces. I need to stop by the bodega first. I need something to eat. I'm eating all day. All right. My hangover's finally, finally passing up here. <laughs> we can eat like kings right now. We got 40 bucks each. Uh, oh, yeah. That's like three bucks. Maybe get some new threads. <laughs> yeah. I got to pay my landlady first, though. You know, as I I start the car, guys, what do y'all think about getting matching clothes? Okay, like real hand. Oh yeah, matching yeah, matching that. suits. Ah oh, yeah, yeah, branding. That's smart. Man. Let's let's grab some food and let's go do that right now. Yeah, we still got nice. a couple hours for our gig. What are you gonna say, my old guy? It's a little concern, you know, about what may happen with those records. That's Assuming you're my... right, Sam. It's not our problem anymore. We gave him a warning. That's all he gets. <clears throat> I don't know. He could be using that for nefarious purposes. Yeah, man. He's a fucking crime lord. Of course he's going to use it for nefarious purposes. <laughs> hey, look, I thought, I thought the man was pretty nice. You know, he gave us some bread and you know we're good like i i don't know maybe don't talk him down quite so much he, no, he could be down, he could... The, the, the issue here is you know we're going to be kind of guilty of giving him something that if it nah, does what sam says no. there's no way it's coming back to us yeah. he hired he hired wendell wendell delivered sam's mama just read him too much of that revelations nonsense come on now. Let's go get something to eat and get some threads and get to our gig. Uh, all so right, well, I had to say something. It, you got to think of it this way. The, the, the government don't care about us. The, the police don't care about us. So it's people like Casper that have to be in a position where they can help our community. Mm -hmm. And if they have to go about it by sometimes being a little, that's because the police don't help us. Mm -hmm. cares about uh, I, I think this well gonna, said, Sam. I think this is gonna bite us in the ass. Uh, well, just don't let it bite you in the ass. Let it bite somebody else in the ass. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get some food. I'm kind of hungry. All right. Yep. You guys are able to get some food. You get yourself some uh, matching outfits since you're you're wanting to wear. We'll uh, show a picture here, maybe, of what you guys uh, look like. I couldn't find one where uh, he had a piano, but looking, uh, got your nice nice bowler hat there, yeah. uh, shirt and tie. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, you look, you guys look nice. I actually have a bow. I was figuring I was doing it with my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> we make maybe, those, maybe, that well, outfit look good. Yeah, for the promotion picture, maybe you're using the bow. <laughs> but, all right, so well, guys, uh, get to the club. It is uh, packed in there because the uh, Hep Cat, you know, they don't have a band tonight because Wendell, Wendell and his group were supposed to be playing. So it's uh, it's packed in. Uh, the bar bar keeps uh, pouring the drinks, and he's like going, "All right, let's get this floor going, guys." All right, all right guys. Give, me, give me top shelf, top shelf tonight, man. That's all I'm drinking. Okay, start with uh, Sam's new song. Yeah, it, it's it's not quite ready yet. I mean, we can we can do some improvising around it, I guess. 
Oh, well, yeah, that's all jazz. Yes, yes, yes. All right, All right, Ma I'll try. Ma Malachi, drum us in. All right. Yeah, listen. All right. Hard success. All right. Everyone, give me a, a roll on your instruments with a bonus die because Malachi is uh, on time. And <laughs> I got a hard. Nice. Yeah, hard sex. Hard as well. Bass is Regular. Going Regular. All right. Uh, so you're playing along, and uh, Phil, give uh, everyone but Phil, give me a spot hidden. I am rolling tonight, double O two. Nice. <laughs> Hard. Regular. Okay. Yeah. All right. Everyone, and Phil sees it automatically. That's why he didn't need to roll. Uh, you see. Uh, a person kind of tapping along to the music at the bar. He's uh, all dressed in blue. Phil, you recognize him immediately as the uh, guy that you bet the uh, that you bet and won the uh, six six valve horn from. And uh, everyone can give me a power roll. This is not good. Even if I didn't see him. Yep. Okay. Fail. Okay. Uh, I passed, and I'll spend five luck to make it hard if I need to. Okay. I Mine's failed. extreme. Okay. I, amazingly enough, barely passed. All right. Okay. Um, and uh, Phil, how'd you do? I failed. All right. I love it. All right. So <laughs> uh, Anton and Jerry, uh, you're kind of playing there, and then things start see seeming strange uh some of the people they they stop and they they start crying others they start kind of pushing each other getting in a fight sam malachi and phil you are back in the trenches and uh you you see some uh germans uh trying to climb up climb up onto the uh climb into your trench you know, Anton and Jerry, it looks just like some people are trying to get up on stage with stage with you. Uh, sure. But uh, Sam, Malachi, and Phil, what, what do you want to do? The, the 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 Germans are coming. They're they're going to breach. They've got across no man's land already. Well, I'm going to shoot them. Okay. With my rifle. All right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Okay. I got a 10 out of 65. So All right. So uh you know Anton and Jerry you see uh Sam he stops playing. He got his holds up this non-existent rifle and fire fires away and Sam and you the that that the German's head just blows up. How about you Malachi? Yeah, I got my rifle and I'm firing away. All right, so the drum drum stop, and you see a drumstick go fly flying, and uh, he he give me a strength roll there, Malachi, because even though you're you're shooting, you're oh, I got a really good strength roll. Oh, good. All right, twenty three. That's a hard success. All right, Anton and Jerry, give me a sanity roll. Anton and. Okay. All right. So, so, uh, what you see is he threw that hard enough and it went into the person's eye that was climbing up on the stage and they kind of stumble back and, uh, saw another person next to him grabs the drumstick and yanks it out and they start fighting each other and all. And oh. Phil, you are, uh, drawn to keep playing, but now you want to, you know, you're trying to maybe just dance around the Germans that are. Yeah. are no, I want to kick them. I want to kick yeah. them. They're trying to climb into our trench. Kick All them. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, and there's a lot of other chaos going on. Like the bartenders now throwing uh, the bottles at, at people to keep it away. And it's breaking out into a full, full fledged melee. All right, Anton and Jerry, what are you going to do? Cause you still have your wits about you. Yeah, I'm I'm done playing with the drumstick. Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit, Malachi, what the hell, man? What the fuck? Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to like like 
shake the other guys and say like, guys, we gotta get the we gotta get the hell out of here. People are losing their damn minds. Okay. All right. Which one do you shake? Uh I'll be closest to Malachi. Okay, Malachi, you see a uh, a German. You don't know how he got in there and why he's holding this big uh, wooden club, his base. But he, he he looks like he wants to beat the the hell out of you. <laughs> All right, do it. Yeah, butt stock of the um. All right, you guys can give me a fighting brawl. Get away from him, you dirty Jerry. <laughs> God, damn, Jerry. That's... Uh, that's a extreme success oh uh, nice I just had a regular so All right, so he wins it Anton what, what do you do when you see he kind of swings at you like push him down or... yeah I'm gonna like push him down and like like get him in a get him in a hold okay. um, like what the fuck man calm down you just killed someone you crazy motherfucker <laughs> like hold him yeah All it's right. the cherries it's the cherries <laughs> Oh, yeah. We got a guy named Jerry. All right. And uh, Sam, uh, Jerry, what are you doing? I'm I'm back in, uh, like, to the back of the stage, and I'm going to start trying to shout at Phil, see if he responds. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Sam, you see uh, this Jerry named Jerry back and in, back in up, to, up, up to you. It looks like maybe he got uh, turned around. Maybe he got hit by some uh, chemical weapons or something. And he can't see anymore. But, man, yeah, that's an easy target for you. What would you like to do, Sam? Oh, you said Sam. I thought you said Phil. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just going to turn and fire my rifle at him, too. Okay. All right. Yep. Oh, you, you. Which once again hits him square between the eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure there's nothing yep. there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're right. To your horror, this this uh, German just keeps keeps kind of backing up. Oh. Yeah, he's like he's like impervious to bullets. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably up there on stage, actually going. Pew pew. <laughs> right. All right. Um, when the sound effects. Phil, you're uh, kicking away. You're uh, you're got people are uh, blood kind of flying as you're like knocking people's teeth out, and you see the uh, the Baron in blue walking walking up to you, and he actually looks like the Baron in blue, not like you're back in the trenches. How he got how he got to uh, France, you don't know, but <laughs> what in the hell is he doing here? Um, yeah, I don't, he, I, he's on my side. I mean, he helped me before. So, you know, help us with these Germans, Baron. He, he come, comes up, he stops and he, he looks around. He's like going, he goes, uh, and Anton and Jerry, you, you see him also. He kind of looks up and he's like on you've you've played well phil you've uh but it's time for me to get my horn back no man i won this yes i i understand but it is uh it is mine now don't force me to take it but you're gonna take back a horn i won fair and square yes can you at least take care of these germans before they kill us Oh, uh, I can. He's like, can you help me remove my hat? Yeah, I reach up for his hat. Okay. When you take it off, it's like uh, the mask comes off and uh, behind is just a void of space and everything, you know, just starts like if you, if, when something gets depressurized, everything starts uh, just being pulled uh, immediately to it. Everyone can give me a oh, no. strength or dex to not be sucked out into. Sorry, guys. 91. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got 27. I'm good. Hey, right. I actually got a hard success on my strength. All right. And how'd you do, Anton? Regular success. Uh, yeah. All right, so you guys are hanging on, and the, the temperature in here is dropping quickly. You see Sam just kind of fly, and it doesn't make sense that Sam should be able to fit into just this spot where this head is, but he kind of goes in, you know, and he 
you know the term like spaghettify as like they approach a uh, a black the horizon hole. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you see it gets kind of stretched out you guys can all give me sanity rolls for that except me because i'm spaghetti except you yeah. <laughs> i do some fossey moves <laughs> yeah. it's 1d4 if you pass because it's still insane uh if you fail it is uh 1d20 <laughs> i gotta read uh, i i succeeded but i lost four more points of sanity and that pushes me over my okay. uh Excellent. my eight yeah Oh, yeah, yeah, you lost all the last of yours there, Malachi. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, Malachi, you hit when you hit zero sanity, you just uh, get up and you uh, just start running, punching every every day, blasted German as you go running out of this. Uh, <laughs> all right. Push me off. Oh, God, what the hell? I'm completely mad. Uh, uh, the Baron, you hear like this kind of this is voice is like going, I'll take my horn now, Phil. Yeah, I give it to him. Yeah. Hey, hey, no, no. <laughs> Hold up here. I'm walking up to the Baron. Just, it's, mm-hmm. You're the one that's doing all of this, aren't you? You're behind everything. It's just a dream. What? It's It's just a dream. He puts his hat back on and suddenly, like, you know, the pressure returns. Is Sam back? No. <laughs> Maybe his hat got left behind. But <laughs> Are people still losing their minds? Uh, when, now, the music stopped. Now people are, uh, the people that have failed, uh, failed their pa- power roll for, uh, they are kind of like, starting to just speak incoherently, but they're no longer fighting and punching each other. Oh and the Baron God. goes, uh, it, it's just a dream. Don't, don't worry about it. Like going, uh, I'll see, I'll see you later. And he just, uh, turns and starts walking away. And you see him, he kind of comes up, he puts his arm around Malachi and just starts escorting him him out with it, with him. I'm just sitting there blubbering. This yeah. is too much for my little brain. Oh, yeah, 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 because yeah, we'll say that was your bout of madness. You just start crying. Uh, when he uh, opens the door, you, uh, you hear co- uh, police sirens approaching. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out the fire escape. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's get out of there. Yeah. yeah. Out of there. All right. Okay. So over the next uh, next few days, you you hear stories about uh, you know this uh, cl- cl- riot at a club, and then uh, even worse, you start hearing stories about uh, other people that they uh, are found wandering the streets, and uh, you. S- if you go inspect it out, you do realize that they had uh, bought one of the records from uh, Casper Hol- Holstein. And uh, fortunately, there was only 80 of them, so only about uh, 100 or so people, because some people were uh, get committed. Bellevue starts getting overrun with uh, the people. And, uh, of course, the uh, the city starts blaming it on, you know, that uh, – you can't you can't trust uh, you know the Harlem Renaissance to uh, be able to handle themselves, and that they need to increase the police force to uh, to get get control of the things to enforce law and order. All right, that was uh, that jazz craze. <laughs> Crazy, yeah, and I'm spaghettified. You are spaghettified, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm I mean, still completely conscious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Malachi just thinks he's fighting. Well, he's insane and yeah, taken yeah. by the man in blue. The man in blue, who is a reflection of Azathoth's dreams. That's why he said it's just oh. a dream. He's just... All right, Why? so... 
So tell us what happened. Like, so what happened is that uh, for some reason, Azathoth's dream became projected in, into there. Uh, he sleeps with all the insane music of the uh, the pipers of Azathoth. Uh-huh. So when he heard the jazz, he just it, he just ran. His dream just ran with it, and he decided to essentially like you know. I, I think the devil went down to Georgia to get into a bet, but his his bet is that he always wins. So whoever plays plays his trumpet, they inflict insanity on it. Uh, and Wendell recorded it. Everyone that would listen to it, kind of like you guys got figured, they started losing their mind. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Phil was right. Nobody nobody could play like him. That's so. true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys know nobody ever will again. <laughs> That's right. We hope. Well, well, you never know when that horn may show up again. That's right. <laughs> Plus, somewhere out there is a record or two or a, a master that every once in a while gets played through the ages oh, yeah. that causes mass insanity. And mass God hysteria. Only know, God only knows if it ever gets played on a radio station. Yeah. yeah. Well, luckily, I still have enough money left over to make it back to Texas. So That's I can right. just escape all of this craziness. Right. Nope. <laughs> Leave it all behind me. <laughs> Shock it up. Sam is now a big app. Sam is now in the dreams of Azathoth. That's right. <laughs> Living forever. Our players included Troy Will, Dreyer, Kaylin McDowell, Steve Anderson, Oren Meyer, and myself, with Keith Craig as the keeper of Arcane Lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members. You can set up private games. You can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free from the download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the channel is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to show us your appreciation, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icons for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.